As rock hounding enthusiasts, at one time or another, we've all done this. We've brought home a bucket full of rocks and we put our rock identification hats on and we've tried to identify all the rocks we just found. We consult one of our 10 rock identification books we bought over the past couple of years. We get our street plates out, we get our scratch tests out, and we just pound our heads over trying to identify these rocks. Usually we can narrow it down maybe two or three, maybe four possibilities, but it can be a frustrating process. But I'm here to tell you today that you might be overthinking it, and rock identification may be easier than you think. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. Rock Hunting Life here. It's been a busy week. We're super busy with the Makers Challenge, but I thought I would do this video because I wanted to talk about rock identification. Every week I get emails from viewers asking me to identify rocks. They send me pictures, and I love doing it, by the way. I keep sending those. I love looking at your rocks and trying to figure out what they are. But usually the first thing I ask when I see a picture is I'll ask, where did you collect the sample from? Or do you know the location where this was collected if you didn't collect it yourself? Identify this rock. Uh, Are there any questions you need to ask me before you identify it? Where'd you get it from? Oh, yes. Boom, you got it first try. <laughs> nice work. That's the most important piece of information that I, in my own opinion, will require in order to identify a rock. If I know the location, then I can do the research on what the geology is in the area, what rocks are typically found in that area. Typically, there's a geological survey that's been done in the area, which will outline all this information. And that's the first key bit of information you really need. You're not gonna find that in a generic rock identification book. The problem with these books, I find, is that the specimens that they show are typically grade A specimens, like they're perfect specimens of each mineral. The crystal structure is well-defined. It's just an unrealistic picture of what you potentially could find in the field. So I would be very cautious when consulting a book like this. I'm not saying all these books are bad. Some of them are pretty good. I like seeing the different types of minerals and the, the crystal habitats and the structures, but you need to be careful when you're consulting books like that, especially when comparing rocks in your area to rocks that have been collected at world-class locations around the world. So you don't want to get into that habit because a lot of times the rocks you're going to find are not going to be as spectacular as the rocks you find in those books. So it's gonna be hard for you to kind of connect the dots as far as identifying the rocks. Now, what I do find these books good for is the information on the physical properties like hardness, street color, crystal structure, cleavage, all that information will be in here. And a lot of times there'll be literature on your area. For example, here in Nova Scotia, we have a couple of publications that help you identify rock hounding locations and give you an idea what you can find in those areas. For example, a really great resource here in Nova Scotia is the Nova Scotia geology map. It's just a map that, you know, has a map of Nova Scotia. Uh, I'm not going to open it here. It's just going to be too big for the screen, but it has basically I open this up and it's just a map of Nova Scotia and it tells me, you know, what rocks I can find in the area, great rock hounding locations, what I can find there. And it's just a great starter guide for beginners. Another great publication here in Nova Scotia that I highly recommend for locals is the Geology in Nova Scotia. It's a little more detailed and a little more location specific, but it's got some really popular locations here in Nova Scotia and it gives you an idea of the geology, local geology, helps you understand the history as far as uh, you know how the province was made geology wise. And it's just a really good resource. It's written by a couple of professors that are in local universities here. And yeah, it's just, uh, it's, I find that this has been one of the greatest books that ever's come out for, you know, just local uh, hobbyists 
here uh, for rock hounding. It's a great it's a great little book, so I highly recommend it. Again, it's the Geology of Nova Scotia, and you can find a copy of this in the Natural History Museum. I think it's also in chapters. Uh, same with the uh, roadmap in Nova Scotia. You can find this at the local tourist bureaus. You can find them uh, at the Natural History Museums. Uh, all the museums across the, the province you find this, so it's a great little resource. Another great option is to go to your local rock club if you have one in your area or even your local Facebook groups. There's usually a local Facebook group for the area that you rock hound in. We have numerous local Facebook groups here in Nova Scotia. You'll find people there that have a lot of experience in the area that you are rock hounding in and you'll you'll find out that they have a you know a lot of specimens they have a lot of experience they know what rocks are there you could even help you know get help from them identifying rocks and then until you're comfortable and you you get a feel for what rocks are in your area then you'll have that same feel eventually as well and as i mentioned before usually the government has done a lot of work on geological surveys and have identified a lot of the rocks in your area so that's a really great resource to go to to help you on your rock identification journey, especially in your local area. And if you're visiting an area that you're not really familiar with, that's also a great resource is to go to the government website, find out what rocks are in the area, find out what people have been finding there. And that way it makes your job easier when you go to find rocks and you want to identify them. The second most important thing for me when I'm identifying a rock is actually holding the rock. Like I have to ha have it in my hands uh, to try to make a proper identification. Now I know when people send me pictures, uh, it's impossible to do that obviously. Uh, but for me, when I actually have the specimen, uh, I like to hold it, get a feel for the physical properties in my hands. Uh, that's, you know, the weight of the rock, things like that. A lot of times when you handle the rocks enough, just by touching them and feeling them, you'll know what it is especially if you're on the fence between one or two possibilities. That's another important characteristic that I look for is touch and feel. Now in the case you don't know where the rock you are trying to identify is from, then it gets a little tricky, obviously. Um, then you're gonna have to utilize the physical properties of the rock, plus doing things like harness tests. If there's any crystal showing, what, are, what is the crystal habitat? What's the crystal structure? Can you see any cleavage planes? Things like that. You're going to have to use those tools. And again, those are all outlined in these rock identification books. Usually they'll have all that information there for each mineral. And you could try to match up what you have to that. That's the frustrating part is when you're not quite sure. That's why I say if you do know where the locality is, you need to go and try to find out what rocks have been found in that location. It's through a process of elimination. You know what ones aren't found there, but you know which ones are. It makes it a lot easier to identify. You're eliminating a huge amount of possibilities and just narrowing it down to a couple. And that's the best advice I could give is, uh, you know, most of us know the areas that we're rock hunting in. So, you know, it's easy to gather information, do the research, do your due diligence in finding out what rocks are there. It's going to take a little bit of, of looking up on the internet, but trust me, uh, I think it's a lot more rewarding than trying to thrift through pages of a book and trying to figure out, you know, what my rock is, especially when the pictures don't match what I have. Anyway, guys, that's my two cents. Thanks for watching the video. Maker's Challenge video coming next week, so stay tuned for that. Real excited for the whole week of videos. Looking forward to everybody's project. And yeah. I hope everybody has a great week, and we'll catch you on the next one. See you later.